Good morning. Today I'd like to read you a story called Electrical Wizard, How Nikola Tesla Lit Up the World by Elizabeth Rush and illustrated by Oliver Dominguez. A young inventor's first endeavors are purely instinctive, promptings of an imagination vivid and undisciplined. As we grow older, reason asserts itself and we become more and more systematic in designing but those early impulses, though not immediately productive, are of the greatest moment and may shape our very destinies. Nikola Tesla. The night of Nikola Tesla's birth, lightning zapped, crackled, and flashed overhead. For years after, booming thunder drew the poor Serbian boy to the window of his family's small home. Nikola gazed, mystified, as electrical bolts ricocheted across the sky. One evening, when he was three, Nikola stroked his cat, Masak. The cat's fur snapped with tiny sparks. What is it? Nikola wondered. Was it some kind of wizardry? Electricity, his father explained. The same thing you see through the trees in a storm. Enchanted by the sparking halo his hands had conjured, Nikola wondered what other magic he could perform. When he was five, Nikola dangled his fingers in a nearby brook. How fast the water moved. How hard it pushed his hand. Nikola had an idea. He found a disc cut from a tree trunk. He poked a hole in the disc, jammed a stick through the hole, then balanced the wheel above the stream. The wooden wheel spun and spun as if under the spell of the water. Nikola began to notice invisible energy everywhere. Even the flight of insects drummed with power. When he was nine, he built a propeller spun by flying June bugs. Once they were started, he marveled, they continued whirling for hours and hours. As a teenager, Nikola became entranced by a photograph of Niagara Falls cascading waters. As he remembered his little creek water wheel, a vision flashed into his mind. He imagined giant water wheels pummeled by Niagara's pounding waters, spinning endlessly. Nikola made a prophecy. Someday, I will turn the power of Niagara Falls into electricity. In college, Nikola eagerly watched a demonstration of a new electrical machine. The professor spun a hand crank, whirr, whirr making an alternating electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. With a burst of noisy sparks, dzz, dzz, the current was forced to move through a wire in only one direction so it could run a motor. Inspiration flashed. Nikola realized that the motor didn't need to be run by direct current. Alternating current, like the kind created by the hand crank, could power the motor. Sticking with alternating current would be simpler than converting to direct current, and it would eliminate that awful sparking. Nicola suggested this to the class. The professor scoffed. Many people had tried to make motors that could run with alternating current. All had failed. The professor declared, Mr. Tesla will accomplish great things, but he certainly will never do this. But a few days later, certainty washed over Nicola. He would find a way to harness the power of alternating current. The problem of alternating current hummed in Nikola's mind. He took a job climbing telephone poles in Budapest and imagined electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. He invented a loudspeaker for phones and imagined electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. He moved to Paris, where he worked on electrical devices designed by American inventor Thomas Edison generators, motors, fuses, and switches, and imagined electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. One day, when he was 26, Nicola went for a walk with a friend. The sun set in a fiery blaze. The buzzing thoughts inside Nicola's head sparked together like a lightning bolt. Suddenly, he understood how to power a motor using alternating current. He saw it all clearly in his mind. Nicola grabbed a stick, waving it like a wand. See how smoothly it is running, he gasped. There's no sparking. I see nothing, said his friend. The sun is not sparking. Are you ill? Nicola dropped to his knees and began drawing a diagram in the dirt. At last, his companion understood how alternating current could spin a motor using magnets, 
whose poles flipped back and forth, back and forth. Over the next few months, Nikola conjured in his head all the parts of a new electrical system based on alternating current. Night and day, Nikola pictured the machines designing, testing, and fixing problems he saw. He didn't have to write anything down. He could see it all in his mind. Nikola traveled through Europe, seeking money to build his AC machines. He felt like a fortune teller. The days of candlelight, gas lamps, and direct current were over, he told investors. Not only could alternating current power lights and motors, but it could also travel great distances much more cheaply and efficiently than direct current. It could power every house, every business, everything from tiny light bulbs to huge factories. No one believed him. So he sailed to America where he knew of at least one person who would be interested in his ideas, Thomas Edison. Two days after docking in New York City, Nikola Tesla stepped into the office of his hero. Nikola handed Edison a letter of recommendation written by a mutual friend. It said, I know two great men and you are one of them. The other is this young man. What can you do? Edison asked. Nikola burst into a description of how alternating current could power the world. Nonsense, Edison scowled. We're set up for direct current in America. People like it, and it's all I'll ever fool with. Instead of becoming Nikola's partner in electrifying the world, Edison became his greatest rival. Nikola was desperate for money to build his inventions. He invited bankers, business bigwigs, and powerful people like author Mark Twain to his darkened lab for strange demonstrations of the wonders of alternating current. In one demonstration, Nikola held out a simple glass tube. With his other hand, he reached for a wire. I bring my body in contact with a wire conveying alternating currents. The audience squirmed at the thought of the shock. When Nikola's hand touched the wire, the tube glowed. Nikola spun slowly so everyone could see that the electrical current traveled across his body to the tube. Then Nikola released the wire and strode away. The tube still coursed with light. The audience gaped in awe. How did the electricity get to the bulb without any wires? Is there, I asked. Can there be a more interesting study than that of alternating current, he asked his audience. Over time, Nikola's fame grew until he raised enough money to build his AC generators and motors. Tesla quickly got to work. He recreated the machines exactly as he had imagined them. As he predicted, they worked perfectly. But Tesla's joy was short-lived his old rival, Thomas Edison, who already ran a dozen direct current power stations, moved fast to squelch the competition. He blanketed New York with pamphlets. Alternating current is dangerous, he warned, even deadly. To prove his point, Edison's associates electrocuted dogs, horses, and even an elephant with alternating current. Direct current is just as deadly, but no one mentioned this in the demonstrations. Edison wouldn't rest until investors and the public alike were scared away from Nikola's new technology. At the height of the War of the Currents came the biggest electrical challenge in history. The Chicago World's Fair was to be the first ever fair lit with electricity. People assumed Edison would get the job of wiring the fair, but to everyone's surprise, the company Westinghouse which would Nikola's inventions won the honor. But could they do it? Would Nikola's mysterious inventions safely provide enough electricity to illuminate the entire fair? What if there was so much electricity that a fire started or part of the fair blew up? On opening day, people flooded the fairgrounds. They wandered through the alabaster buildings, gawked at the first Ferris wheel and flocked to taste strange new foods shredded wheat cereal, Cracker Jack, and juicy fruit gum.
In the Great Hall of Electricity, people gaped over electric lamps, elevators, fans, sewing machines, stoves, and laundry machines all run with alternating current. But the true test of the electrical system would happen at sunset. As day ended and night darkened the sky, the President of the United States, Grover Cleveland, turned a golden key. Flash! All at once, 100,000 lamps illuminated the fairgrounds, creating a spectacle of light never before seen anywhere in the world. The crowd was amazed. It was a miracle. It was like magic. Back in the Great Hall of Electricity, Nicholas stepped onto a stage. Tall, elegant, and proud, he grabbed the end of a wire and flicked a switch. More than 250,000 volts of electricity pulsed across his body, tingling his muscles. The crowd pressed back in alarm, expecting him to be burned or even to die. But Nicola was very much alive. Glimmering in a halo of sparks, he was a marvelous sight to behold. Wonder's baffling explanation we now see in a different light, Nicola exclaimed. The fair had been a triumph, but Nicola had an even more astounding trick up his sleeve. The pulsing ground quaking waters of Niagara Falls had haunted him for years. He couldn't shake from his mind the picture of Niagara's pounding water rotating huge wheels, which would spin huge magnets, generating electricity for thousands of homes. Vanishing from the limelight, Nicola toiled for two years to turn his vision of spinning wheels into the most gigantic electrical project ever attempted. No one was sure if it would work. No one except Nikola Tesla, who could picture it all in his mind. Finally, the first huge generator was ready. With a sleight of hand, an engineer diverted Niagara's gushing water toward the turbines. An aluminum factory roared to life. A year later, more turbines and generators joined the throng. Houses shimmered with light. Electricity reached Buffalo, New York, 22 miles away. Railway cars surged forward. I saw my boyhood plan carried out, Nicola marveled, and wondered at the unfathomable mystery of the mind. Nicola's miraculous inventions at Niagara soon electrified the trolleys, subways, and great buildings of New York City, even the blinding lights of Broadway. Not long after, electricity spread to homes and businesses across America. Eventually, Nikola Tesla's electrical wizardry illuminated the world, and it all started with a spark. Tesla versus Edison, the rivalry. When Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla first met in 1884, the American inventor had 18 power stations producing direct current electricity in New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and New Orleans, and plans for hundreds more. The renowned inventor was already the master of a new electrical empire. Nikola Tesla was an unknown electrician with a strange accent whose only invention existed in his head. And Tesla's alternating current idea wasn't an improvement of the direct current system. It was a direct competitor. Though Edison dismissed Tesla's ideas about alternating current, he did hire the young engineer. For a year, Nikola toiled for Edison. Often from 10.30 a.m. until 5 the next morning, Edison said to him, I have had many hardworking assistants, assistants, but you take the cake. He promised to pay Tesla $50,000 to improve his direct current motors. Tesla did, but when he tried to collect his pay, Edison just laughed. Tesla, you don't understand American humor. Nikola stormed out of Edison's office. The young engineer struggled financially for months, even digging ditches to feed himself. When Tesla found investors and began developing his AC electrical system, Edison strove to squelch the competition before it even got off the ground. He published a pamphlet with a scarlet cover blazoned with the word warning that claimed that alternating current was deadly. It is a matter of fact, he wrote, that any system employing high pressure, i.e. 500 to 2000 units, that's volts, jeopardizes life. 
He backed efforts to limit the voltage of current used in New York City, which would rid AC of its advantage, to electrocute animals with AC current, and to convince New York State to enforce the death penalty using an AC-powered electric chair. Even after Edison lost the contract to wire the World's Fair, he continued to put up a fight. Edison barred Westinghouse from using his incandescent light bulb design at the fair. While scrambling to install the biggest lighting system in history, the Westinghouse team had to invent a new light bulb, build a glass factory, and produce a quarter million of the new bulbs. Despite Edison's roadblocks, Tesla and Westinghouse succeeded brilliantly. One later incident suggests a grudging respect between the two inventors. In 1895, Nikola Tesla's lab was completely destroyed by a fire. Edison let Tesla use his equipment and work in his lab for a few weeks until he got a new lab up and running. In 1917, Nikola Tesla was offered what had become the most prestigious award in electrical engineering, the Edison Medal. At first, Nikola refused. You would not be honoring Tesla, he wrote, but Edison who has previously shared unearned glory from every previous recipient of this medal. But eventually, Tesla accepted. The night of the award ceremony, a friend introduced Nikola Tesla. Were we to seize and eliminate from our industrial world the results of Mr. Tesla's work, the wheels of industry would cease to turn, our electric cars and trains would stop, our towns would be dark. While Thomas Edison himself never publicly recognized the genius of Nikola Tesla's work, the honor given in his name did. Ahead of his time. Nikola Tesla's ideas were so revolutionary, so ahead of their time, that we are only now realizing how his work has transformed our world. If you play with a remote control car, flick on a fluorescent or neon light, get an x-ray to see if your arm is broken, Check the speedometer in a car, call someone on a cell phone, or even just turn on the radio, you are using Nikola Tesla's inventions. While developing his AC electrical system, Tesla was also in hot pursuit of wireless transmission. In 1898, he demonstrated the first remote control. In a large tank of water, he floated a gigantic toy boat, five feet long by three feet wide. From a device in his hand, he moved the boat forward and back, left and right, and turned its lights on and off. Observers asked to see inside the boat. They thought someone must be inside controlling it. Tesla soon developed ways to transmit signals long distances without wires. But another inventor stole his wireless thunder. In 1901, Italian Guglielmo Marconi transmitted and received radio signals across the Atlantic Ocean. Three years later, Marconi was awarded a patent for the radio. But the Italian's work was based on as many as 17 of Nikola Tesla's patents. In 1943, the US Supreme Court ruled that Nikola Tesla was in fact the inventor of the radio. In the spring of 1899, Nikola stepped off of a train at Colorado Springs to embark on his most ambitious wireless project ever to transmit not signals, but electricity without wires. Electrical waves he detected during a lightning storm had convinced him that it would be possible to transmit power in unlimited amounts to any terrestrial distance and almost without loss. He managed to make 130 foot long sparks before blowing out the entire powerhouse for Colorado Springs. In 1901, he tried again building a strange giant tower called Wardenclyffe that he hoped would generate 7.5 million kilowatts and, and wrap the globe with wireless communication and nearly free electric power. But his investors pulled their funding before Tesla could test his idea. If anyone can draw on the power, where do we put the meter, complained financier JP Morgan. Some of the inventor's ideas are still powerful enough to transform our world today. Nikola Tesla imagined robots that could think for themselves and electricity generated from the swell of tides. He even proposed harnessing the energy of spinning planets. We are whirling through endless space with an inconceivable speed. All around us, everything is spinning, everything is moving, everything is energy, he said. 
there must be some way of availing ourselves of this energy more directly. Maybe one day, with the help of your ideas and ingenuity, these ideas will become reality. The end.